Previously on Code Red, life with the St George Queensland Reds. The Ballymore based organisation has made headlines around the sporting world for its drastic turnaround in fortune, having built a model around recruiting the best leaders, coaches and some of the most talented footballers on the planet. But the bigger picture reveals a leap in progress on many different levels. Membership, participation and attendance numbers are amongst the most significant in the Southern Hemisphere. While the on-field battles challenge the resolve of the playing group, the next generation of Reds are being nurtured through the QRU's self-imposed duty of care for the future of the game. While the different cogs of the Reds machine continue to turn, the season built to an important crescendo, and despite the capacity crowds and the soaring fan base, the destiny of the 2012 story lay in the hands of the players. Oh, you could say something interesting and amusing about everyone. There's so many different dudes. It's guys like Liam Gill and Jake Schatz who are constantly just cruising around, joking around, acting like nothing matters, but they seem to be able to turn up on the training field and be absolute world-class footballers. Wall. Wall's probably one of the funniest guys I've ever met, but just subtly. Adam Wallace Harrison and Van Humphreys usually have to have to park their wheelchairs out the front and pick up their false teeth. Radiki's another one, even though he is 42. You know, Digby makes me laugh by just looking at him sometimes because he's doing does some weird stuff. Ben Daly's usually got some concern about his love life that he wants to discuss. There's a guy like Bo Robinson who's just incredibly different in every single way, particularly how he looks, actually. Um, John O'Lance always has got some good chat. Albert Anno, he's always one to get a laugh out of everyone. I can sing that song. Michael Jackson. Craig Cooper is an iconic name in Australian sport. He is forever interesting to those that love him and those that don't, but neither group would be surprised to hear that he is most at ease with football in hand. Rugby to me is a, a way of like expressing yourself and you can basically distance yourself from, from everything else going on and just have fun. And I've, I've been at the Reds you know, since I was about 15. Um, I love you know, everything about this place. You know, I love you know, the state, I love living in Brisbane, and also the team, it's a, a team that I've you know, grown to love. You know, when I moved over here from New Zealand, um, you know, that's all I knew. So this house just up here on the left was our house that we stayed at for ages. So many memories here, mate. Yeah, being a you know, footy player, you're always travelling, there's always training and stuff like that, so you know, any chance I get to pick up my brothers from school, you know, think little things like that, that they might not mean much to other people, but you know, for me, those are moments that you, know, you just can't take for granted. He's got a dummy, dummies 1100 times in a row, he's just got to learn to pass the ball. <laughs> see you later, see you later, sir. Nice school, bro. What'd you learn? Just hang out with them for a bit, um, talk a little bit of crap in, in the car and drive around and, and hear stories about them, you know. Kids grow up so quickly and, you know, and I look back at my years and so sometimes you wish that you could have those you know, those times back and have you know, not a care in the world. I'm three years older than him and she's just like, oh, I'm like three times smarter than you though. My little brothers and sisters are, are really good kids and I try as best as I can to make sure that they have you know, the, every little thing that they need. Um, whether it just be a little bit of spending money on the holidays, good footy boots and stuff like that. Um, you know, they do a lot for me and as much as they can, whether it be just them spending time with me, coming over, hanging out, doing the dishes for me as, as little brothers and sisters should. But I've made you know, my fair share of mistakes and um, you know, the only way you, you, know, you get past them is by learning from them. You know, and I hope that you know, my brothers and sisters you know, see the good things that I've done and and even some of the mistakes I've made and see 
you know, where they can learn from and you know, I try and keep them in as much check as possible. Some people you know, think I'm very loud and, and out there but you know, that's you know, part of my personality and you know, when you're around people that you're comfortable with, uh, teammates, family and friends, you know, you're always going to be loud, confident. See, I'm going to go to the doctor and make sure it's a boy. They pick the egg. But there's also a shy side. Um, you know, like I've quite a reserved person around people that I'm, I'm not too familiar with and you know, the people that really matter to you, your family and friends, you've got to make sure that you keep the right people around you and, and you have to go around to mum's house for, for a dinner and uh, you, f you find out pretty surely that you know, everybody, everybody loves you but everybody loves to keep everybody in check and having two little cheeky little um, brothers, two younger sisters and one older sister, there's always a little bit of drama going on. You know, if you ever feel like you're getting too far ahead of yourself, then you know, someone's going to bring you back, back down to earth. <laughs> like every athlete, Cooper performs best when confident. He is most confident when surrounded by those he's comfortable with. So then it makes sense to become comfortable with as many people as possible. I really love you know, Twitter and, and connecting with the fans. You, know, you can chat to people when, when you're bored and there's, there's not much doing. You can have a ca casual chat and you can, you can throw your thoughts out to a discussion board basically. And I get messages from people all over the world just, you know, just saying hello, good night, good morning, you know, and, and interested about you know, different topics in life. You get everybody's opinions that you're going to hear out in the field, you're going to hear in the media and stuff, but it thickens your skin because it's at the axis of a button. You, you go there and you, you see all the people hating on you, you see all the people supporting you, but you know, the majority of the people are supporting you. So when you go into a game and you've got people sending in messages of support, it's like bringing the, the stadium home. And that's a, a hobby of mine that, that I really enjoy. Uh, for me, the game is just an amazing um, part of my life at the moment. It's just something that's so special. And I got here in 2009, uh, we're coming second last, a really young group of guys. You know, we had no culture, we had no support groups. Where now, you know, we're, we're like a big family. You know, I've got 30 brothers and 30 best friends now. It's something that we've built up. Um, the culture, the ethic, the, the work rate that everyone puts in. We go out there every weekend to play for each other. And I think that's the main reason why I love being here. We probably throw maybe two to 400 balls a week. You've got 40,000, 50,000 people yelling at you. You don't want to miss because you look like an idiot. From Queen Bee in New South Wales, the Fanga twins grew up playing rugby league and it wasn't until high school that they started playing union. We were playing rugby league and rugby union on Saturday and Sunday and, and it sort of got to year 11 or 12 where we sort of had to make a decision and rugby was our choice. I was captain at school. He was captain at school, he was vice captain at school boys and that was really it. I think Say was vice captain so just to let everyone know that. That was his whole leadership. I'm five minutes older, I captained us when we won the 19s I think he still thinks he's a captain, but he's really a vice captain. And I'm the captain. <laughs> yeah, growing up together, we're all competitive, all of our brothers. Um, my younger brother, Colby, uh, plays for, for the ACT Brumbies. And uh, Vili plays for uni here in Brisbane and also just made his international cap for Tonga. So our heritage is, is Tongan. Um, our father's Tongan and our mother's Aboriginal um, and Australian. Philly and the twins work with Mission Australia throughout the year, inspiring young Indigenous Queenslanders in any way they can. Being obviously Indigenous helps us to relate to, to kids and um, we, we enjoy challenges. We also enjoy helping people. Changing that trend and, and, and getting them some jobs that, you know, that help them build and, and create a, a good opportunity for them in life. And, and that's, a, that's something that really holds. The twins are forever busy doing something proactive in their spare time. And more often than not, it's done together. How's everything going? We've never had a, a full fist fight or anything like that, but because we're best mates, it's, even if we have a little tiff, we kind of have to get over it. Say he thinks he's a Kardashian, he wants a film crew to follow him around. He, that's how important he thinks he is. <laughs> You're just pointing in directions you don't even know. I do. Oh no, Sayer! My route's quicker. Oh, Sayer. So we're going straight here? Let's keep going straight. 
Trust me, trust me. Alright, I'll trust you. Yeah, so outside of rugby, Sam and I try to keep busy and it's more so just to get our minds off off the actual rugby side of things and what we do with breast cancer is very close to our heart. Our, our grandmother was diagnosed with breast cancer twice and um, yeah, she lost both of her breasts and her, this has been a big part of, of why we've taken on that, that breast cancer baton and she asked us if we could help out and we said, yeah, why not? And two years later, we end up being ambassadors for breast cancer. So what we're sort of hoping to do is just run a, <coughs> run a golf day here. Um, it's a charity event, it's not for us to raise money or anything like that. If we can raise awareness firstly and then put some money back in a natural breast cancer, then we're happy. We've done our job. This is sort of something that we're looking at maybe doing. Um, just a just a plain polo. So it'll be um, Hope Island on one side and then Fianga Twins just there. It's going to be a fantastic day and, and yeah, it's something that we really can't wait to, uh, to start setting up and start getting ready for. And it's just a small part of what we do um, outside of rugby. Rugby is the catalyst for all the good work that the Twins do, but it very nearly wasn't to be. In uh, 2007, Anthony got diagnosed with compartment syndrome. My leg swelled up and uh, within half an hour I was, I was in the, uh, the surgical room getting cut open and, and them telling me I probably won't play rugby again. You know, for me, um, Anthony's a benchmark of, you know, players that face adversity every day. He's been injured so many times and people have ruled him out and people have said that he would never play for Australia. That was one of the biggest eye-openers for myself. And that's why both Sam and I try to do as much as we can outside of football and, and really help out the people that we can and, you know, everything that we've done now is from hard work and I think you never do anything without hard work and you never earn anything without hard work. And I, I love this game of rugby and I'll never take it for granted. I'm like a kid, I just like playing with toys, shiny toys that look, look cool and all your camera gear looks pretty expensive so I like to play with it if you need a, a new cameraman just give us a shout, life post footy. James Horwell is known amongst teammates and friends as Big Kev because of his excitement and enthusiasm for everything he does and for obvious reasons. Rugby probably became my sport due more to, to do with my body shape more than anything. It's one of the few games I think going around that you know, it is truly about the group performing as well as possible. The team that succeeds is the team that you know, works together and understands what they're trying to do. And you've got to sometimes make sacrifices for the benefit of the team. And I think that's a, that's a crucial element of, of being a teammate. I mean, Queensland's you know, where I was born and bred, and I think playing for the Reds is a huge honour. It's something that I certainly don't take lightly, and I think the group of guys we've got here, you know, they, uh, they do everything for each other, and you know, I feel that you guys are, are very open with what uh, they do and, and what they can say to me, and I feel that I'm pretty approachable in that sense. As Wallabies and Reds captain, Paul Bull's role requires as much understanding about the game of rugby today off the park as it does on. We, we are in such a competitive environment here, especially in Australia, especially Queensland. There's so many sporting teams in a, a small, I guess, uh, landscape that we need to always push the Reds as much as possible. It's all about the technique, mate. It's all about the, the bowling. We do, you know, spend so much time together away from rugby, and it's, you know, it's important to to be able to do that because it, you know, it gives you that balance that you need. You can burn out quite quickly if you're just constantly always talking about rugby and nothing else. Liam's battling really bad. Like he can play footy. He's not going to make it in the kitchen. The more we're out, people see us and, and doing things, you know, the better it is for, for the code. I didn't, never thought you'd actually say I did a bad job. It's like when you play, you never play a bad game. <laughs> <laughs> that may be the case. However, the Reds' captain has been absent for reasons other than poor form since the clash against the Brumbies earlier in the 2012 season. Uh, I, I ruptured uh, my hamstring tendon, which is uh, one of four tendons that you have in the, in the, in the that make up the hamstring muscle. And um, so I completely ruptured that in half and it's separated by about 14 centimetres. So I've, um, after a long deliberation, we, uh, we elected to have surgery to reattach the tendon back together. At six foot six and 117 kilograms, James Horwell is larger than the majority of patients and requires a few more hands on deck than normal. The operation is also unique. 
The type of rupture is common enough in biceps, but very rarely seen in hamstrings, and somewhat of a case study for surgeons henceforth. So far, so good. It's been really important. You know, we've spent a lot of time getting it right, and uh, you know, hopefully, it's uh, it's you know, it's on the mend. It's progressing nicely. You've got to put a lot of time and effort into it. It can be very frustrating at times, not being able to do things that you thought you could do, but. You know, it's progressing really well and hopefully I can get back on the field at some stage uh, later in the year. The final game of the regular season brought an old foe to Suncorp Stadium and a busy time for Horwell before the hugely anticipated game. Hey Obi, how are you mate? Good to see you. How are you going? It's good. Yeah. It's good on walks, that's the start. Are you done for the year or...? Oh, maybe the spring tour. Yeah. Yeah, we've just got to wait and see mate. It's a pretty good place to watch. You can see everything, can't you? Got Perfect. This tonight, eh? we yeah, got this. we got this. Have a good night, eh? Make sure you yell nice and loud. How are you? Good, how are you guys? We've had a good result happen uh, a couple of hours ago when the Brumbies lost. I don't think I've cheered so hard for a Kiwi team in my life. So technically if we win with a bonus point tonight, then we top the Australian Conference, which will mean we'll host the quarterfinal here next weekend. So there's a lot riding on this and the boys, boys are pretty excited. The Super Rugby draw had one last domestic fixture and it brought the oldest of rivals in the best football stadium on earth together with a unique permutation. The Reds needed a four-try win to make the finals. The old enemy needed to stop them. Every face carries a different expression. Hope, anxiety, expectation, and confidence that the job will be done. best performance of the season, the job gets done with interest. Mate. Nice. JB. Where is Wall? The Reds finished top of the Australian Conference and would play a home qualifying final in seven days. Discussions around the 2013 season are already in motion, and one major development is leading the way. The spiritual home of rugby in Queensland is about to undergo a transformation. Players want to be the best they can be. They want to know that they've got the best facilities that allows them to achieve uh, their goals. Uh, we're very fortunate we have a picturesque uh, home that is emotionally connected deeply to the game rather than a, uh, just a training facility. And uh, separate to that, uh, we understand that what we ultimately need to deliver for this, uh, this team and uh, for future teams is the very, very best facility we can, uh, we can afford them. Ballymore has a future as the, the home of Queensland Rugby, as the home of Reds, uh, but it also may have another life in, uh, in terms of as a community asset. And we've been talking to all levels of government for, for a little while now about what this might, what this asset here might become. And we're not looking to commercialise Ballymore, but we are looking for something that um, can provide an elite training facility for the Reds, that can provide a home for the community of rugby, uh, but also something that ties in with the local community area. The, the redevelopment, the major piece of the redevelopment is a significant project, but every day um, there's investment going into the footprint of Ballymore. The facility will be the largest of its kind in the country, and in addition to the QRU Empire. It is one of several major milestones the QRU proposes for 2013, but setting on-field goals for next year depends on where you finish this year. The Sharks adopted an important ploy when playing at Suncorp. Remove the 35,000 fans by scoring early. It's over the top to JP Peterson for the corner. He cuts back in field. What a try! Whitehead. Jordan calling JP Peterson and he puts on some footwork and then he offloads oh. and over on the far side. They're in the clear again. What a try! Unbelievable! The Reds rely on Wilgenia in the 37th minute to bring the crowd back into the game. 
giving it out to Higginbotham. He's going to have enough pace and he throws it back on the inside anyway. And it is a try. Oops. Oh, intercept. Oh, yeah. And McLeod, he's going to run away. And is that enough to get them into the semi-finals next week? But it was too little too late. And in the blink of an eye, the season was over. In three months, the Reds climbed from ninth to third, the biggest jump in rankings all year. But it does nothing to mask the disappointment. For an organisation with such clarity in its long-term vision, the loss to the Sharks is hardly the end. It is simply an entry in the history books, an indication that loftier aspirations lie in wait. We're satisfied with where, where we've got to. Um, it was a particularly challenging year uh, on and off the field, but everywhere uh, that we identify, uh, we've achieved uh, where we would have hoped we were able to, to, uh, to get to, other than uh, be able to uh, put into the history books that we're able to achieve a back-to-back -back, uh, in the Super Rugby competition. We just had some difficult times, but every team has that, and uh, you just got to work your way through. The best part for me is that even in the tough times, the players never lost their uh, their sense of purpose, never got into finger pointing. There's never any blame. The players have backed the program, the culture, and the environment by by voting with their feet. They're, they're basically all staying. So. Um, that's, a, that's as good an indication that uh, we're on the right track. The St George Queensland Reds head into a new season with lessons learnt and knowledge banked. But facts and figures, wins and losses aside, the Reds have proved that they are the entertainment factor, which, despite the business pedigree, gives people the chance to sit on the edge of their seats for the last minute try watch the international stars of rugby union shine in their own backyard and gaze in wonder at a superstar in the making. So as the sun sets on a difficult 2012, the team farewell some friends and welcome new ones as the Reds machine moves on. And there isn't time to dwell or reflect on what could have been. After all, the next season is just around the corner. To become a Reds member, go to redsmembership.com.au. For more information on the code, visit thecodetvshow.com.au and visit us on Facebook and Twitter for news on DVD and online release of the show.